سلام حال شما خوبه من مجتبا هستم What is the right language for you فارسی sign language English Why is it important to know the right language On the 2nd of April 2001 I was driving on Farhakshar Boulevard, one of the widest and busiest roads in my hometown, Shiraz, where the maximum speed limit was 60. On a rainy day, on a slippery road, I was driving more than 100 kilometers, taking my brother's fiance to our house for a family gathering for the first time. A car turned in front of me. I braked, couldn't stop the car. Bang. The other car was thrown to the sidewalk. My car spun around itself a few times and my brother's fiance's head smashed into the front screen. This happened just 20 days after I got my driving license. Two years later, I had managed to have more than nine proper road collisions. During that two-year period, many people tried to stop my dangerous driving behavior. Police officers fined me, my parents banned me from driving, friends, family, university lecturers asked me, begged me, told me off. They were speaking to me. They were not using my language. On the 10th of May, 2003, I was driving next to my cousin, Dada Shamir, who is the cool guy in our family. He was shocked by my driving. He didn't tell me off. He even didn't ask me to slow down. All he said was, it is not cool to drive fast and cause road collisions. It is difficult and actually cool to drive and not cause any road collisions. That triggered me. He used my language. However, it took us months to change my dangerous driving behavior but Dada Shamir's use of the right language was so effective that today, 10 years after that day, I am a final year PhD researcher specializing in traffic safety and driving behavior. <laughs> Researchers have many important findings that sometimes require society's involvement, starting a behavior, stopping a behavior, or changing a behavior, but they often don't succeed, I believe, because they don't use the right language 20 years ago, we knew the impact of transport on society and the environment, and the need for having effective and efficient urban mobility. But now, we are in a worse situation. Car ownership and car usage has increased drastically. Each year, millions of us are killed or injured in road collisions all around the world. My friend in Edinburgh, which has a great public transport system, commutes to his work five days a week with his private car. There is a bus that stops in front of his house and would drop him off on the same street as his office building. In fact, the distance between that bus stop and his office is shorter than the distance between the parking lot and his office. But he's happy to drive his car, pay the extra cost, pay for parking, deal with daily traffic, and not use public transport. 20 years ago, having a mobile phone was considered to be a luxury. But now, more than five billion people have mobile phones. People in that industry knew how to make having a mobile phone a need, a drive. You probably have heard stories of people who queued in front of mobile shops for days and nights in the cold just to be one of the first people who get a type of mobile phone. For them, the desire of having a specific type of mobile phone overrides the inconvenience of getting it. It was within this social environment of popular and nearly fanatic mobile phone usage that three years ago, when I moved to Leeds, my 73 years old Scottish grandma, Bibi, decided to get a mobile phone in order to keep in touch with me. She went through the hassle and inconvenience of learning to use a mobile phone for the first time in her life. Eventually, she not only learned to make calls, she also learned to write messages. And now, she sends me text messages twice a week. Use of the right language inspired me to endure the hassle and inconvenience necessary to become a safe, cool driver. It inspired my Bibi to learn to use a mobile phone for the first time in her life, and people to queue in the cold for days and nights to buy a mobile phone. It also inspired my friend in Edinburgh to endure the risk of driving his car and ignore the personal and social benefits of using public transport. These examples, and many others, some of which we heard today, thanks to our speakers' challenging and innovative ideas, prove that when the language is right, when there is a need, 
there is a drive, desire overrides inconvenience. The need to use the right language is not limited to scientific research. The great 13th century Farsi speaking poet Molavi said, Chunke ba kudak sarokarat fetad, pas zabane kudaki bayat goshad. When dealing with a child, use the language of children. He emphasized the need to use the right language. The knowledge and skill is available. We need to involve marketing, education, and communication studies into the dissemination of our research results. Learning the right language takes effort, but it is necessary. The difference between 60 kilometers per hour and 100 kilometers per hour is the right language. ممنون از توجهتون شب همگی بخیر